This is three dog. How can I help? Often here on VGS, we talk about games that are a little different. They're not exactly in the mainstream. They offer something that, you know, the AAA titles really don't. And today I'm very excited to talk about a game with one of the lead minds behind it that I think offers an experience that a lot of people haven't gotten from video games before, and they can get that for the first time. I'm speaking with Sean Vanneman. Writer, designer, code founder, developer, all of these different titles for the game Firewatch. How are you doing, Sean? I'm well. Thanks for having me on. So what, exa- what am I talking about here? What is your game? Because I, I gave uh, some lofty praise question. already. <laughs> you know, I already said this is a very different experience. I, I, I put a big bill out there. How are you going to pay for it? Um, it is a single-player, story-driven very character focused mystery set in the woods of Wyoming in 1989. And, and uh, it is in first person and you're walking around uh, exploring a beautiful space while building a relationship with another person who's on the end of a handheld radio and uncovering a bizarre mystery um, as the game unfolds. That is the best way I can describe it. It's an adventure game with systems. Um, if your listeners are like, have a history of playing, uh, video games, uh, LucasArts was like the king of adventure games, um, back in the late eighties and early nineties. And I grew up playing those games and this game is completely different than those in their design and philosophy. But we wanted to set out to make a game that was living and breathing and felt like a movie or like an HBO TV show or something but also transported us the way those games used to. That's the best way I can describe it. Very excellent way to do it. So um, visually, this game, Firewatch, is very, very striking. You know, the first extended trailers that came out from it showed an art style that I hadn't really seen before. Like, it borrows from different ideas, but it is ridiculously unique. How would you describe how Firewatch looks? Gosh, I mean, that's a great um, question. That's a, a difficult question, I should say. Um, uh, gosh. Uh, so Firewatch takes a lot of inspiration in its look from old sort of WPA um, posters of a certain era of Americana. Uh, like what it – what, and then those are posters, I guess, in like a design sense. It's kind of back in vogue now when people are mm-hmm. – when like the National Forest Service is talking – getting people outside or Yellowstone National Park wants people to come visit. But uh, it's sort of through this lens of our like art director and 2D designer, Ollie Moss, and uh, our 3D artist and art director, Jane Eng, who uh, look at those sort of inspirations and then want to build an outdoor space that is the one that your mind and body remembers without striving for perfect realism you know it's Mm -hmm. that's sort of the way we design everything and the like the sort of the philosophy behind the art the story the controls is just um simplified naturalism with a focus on tone like what is this what is it what does your mind's eye remember that trip you took to yosemite feeling like and then we make it look like that so it's very um, vibrant, it's uh, color palettes that are very carefully chosen, uh, really dramatic lighting, uh, and just sort of like gross celebration of the outdoors, I guess, the way I would describe it. Now, there's a huge amount of focus on this game, I think, from the gaming media. A lot of people want to get their hands on it. It's the same type of focus they usually find on the AAA titles that have 120 people working on them. How many people are working at uh, Campo Santo? Oh, man. Uh, So we are, I can tell you 13 human beings have touched the code base. (laughs) Okay, all right. Um, But uh, we're uh, seven or eight, I think, here in San Francisco. Um, We have uh, a designer, um, programmer in Vancouver, 
and a couple of guys, uh, Ollie, the aforementioned uh, art director, and a guy named James, who's an animator in England, and that's it. So we're like, you fluctuate around 10 to 12, depending. Um, yeah, uh, we're very, very, very small, like by design. Uh, it allows us to just um, move at a really rapid pace and build a shorthand with each other and not get sort of overwhelmed by our own size and ambition. Um, even though sometimes it, we still are, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty small. And, um, uh, co-founder of Campo Santo, uh, Jake Rodkin and I, uh, worked at a previous studio that was much larger, but we were lucky enough to sort of be on projects through their entire phase of development and get out in front of them and market them and learn about how to really like, um, like, do the work that a giant AAA game would do to make people know about their game. So we kind of built that into our company philosophy starting from ground zero, which is like we are an entertainment company. So if we are telling people about our game, it must be entertaining, it must be beautiful, it must be surprising at all times, whether it's a trailer we put out or art we put up or um, an event we throw, it's always through that lens. of Like what's going to be entertaining for the people who are ultimately going to want to buy this game. So that's kind of how I think maybe this has come along. Also a lot of good fortune, you know, and a lot of like old relationships. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, um, we're just, I cannot wait for this game to come out. <laughs> we're done with it. So we're just um, doing a PR and marketing and little bug fixing here and there. And we're adding um, a really cool like secret feature. Uh, and uh, we're just like doing all that sort of stuff, but like, man, I just want it to be out. <laughs> like, I want it to be out so badly. It's killing me. Again, I'm speaking with uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. This speaking with Sean Vanneman, one of the co-founders of Campo Santo behind the game Firewatch, the game everyone's talking about. Uh, you used a word there that I think really describes what people want from this game, and I think beautiful is not a word that we use often enough when talking about this industry. Why do you think this game has really captured the minds of so many people when it comes to that? Because that's a word I hear a lot, that this game looks beautiful. It's, it's a word to describe not only the art style, but even like the gameplay mechanics, the role of narrative. How does that term apply to Firewatch? I think it's almost a placeholder for, I think if it was another game, people would say that it was sort of an, it was artistic or an indie art house game, but we've really tried to make sure that this game just uh, doesn't um, categorize itself that way, that it's a very, like, uh, like attention-grabbing story with, like, really engaging dialogue and characters in beautiful places. Uh, and it doesn't have, it doesn't sort of um, insist upon itself as like a piece of art, not to say that it's not art. Like, I don't know. It's not my position to say, yeah. but like the p people playing the game and being entertained and wondering what's going to happen next is like all that matters to us. <laughs> so not like the grand vision or the message. Obviously that stuff exists and is a thing that drive us when we're working on our own. But uh, it was, you know, I think people go to beautiful because it is like, I think Jane and Ollie and our graphics programmers have just done an amazing job. But um, I think it's, it's cause it does, it doesn't look like, uh, I don't know, like an art. It does. It's not like Truffaut, <laughs> you know, it's not like a, it's not like a indie niche cinema. Yeah. It's, it's, it presents itself as something more mainstream. And I hope people, um, I hope it turns out to be that. You know, that was always the goal. All right, we'll have more on Firewatch with Sean Vanneman from Campo Santo, talking more about this game right after the break. Andy Burkowski, VGS Talk Radio, AM 640. This is Andy Burkowski on VGS Talk Radio, AM 640. We're speaking with Sean Vanneman, one of the co-founders at uh, Campo Santo, all about the upcoming game Firewatch. He doesn't want you to call it an indie. He doesn't want you to call it an art house film. He just wants you to call it good. And I think I that's... I wanted you to call it that game I bought. There, well, yeah, there's that too. But I, a lot of people... I, we talked about it... what you call it. We talked about before the break. A lot of people are really excited about it. And we talked about the art style, the, the, the beauty that's involved. I want to touch on a little bit more 
the way that you guys are trying to express narrative in Firewatch. How will we as players be experiencing the story of Firewatch? Uh, yeah, so when we set up to figure out how we wanted to tell a story in a game that wasn't like how we had made games before, Jake and I were um, writers and creative leads uh, on the first season of the Walking Dead game that some people may have played at Telltale. So we knew that we wanted it to be that level of engaging in regards to the character dynamics and what was going to happen next in your role in the story. Uh, but we also knew we wanted to make this game where exploration was key and that we dev never or like hardly ever take control away from you. So you can walk and explore while the story is happening around you. And those were like very interesting challenges. They were almost in direct conflict with each other because sometimes you just have to say, stop, this story is happening to you now. But we didn't want that to be the case. And we also didn't want this to be a game where you're wandering through an empty space without people and without an active, like we're trying to figure out what has happened. You know, um, I love games like that. And there's a lot of great sort of like what has happened here uh, style adventure games. But our game is really about a story that is happening directly to you that you're reacting and responding to while you explore. So the game's really mission focused. We sort of say like, go to this place on the map and discover this thing or accomplish this goal. And along the way, you can talk about anything you see or if the things that happen to you in the places you are, you are in with uh, your boss, this woman named Delilah, and your, I, guess I, I guess I haven't said the main character's name, but um, you play as Henry, and you can talk to your main boss, Delilah, and build this relationship with her as you go to these places and things happen to you. So um, it's uh, very fluid um, and also built upon sort of surprise. Like you don't know what's going to be, what's going to happen when you get to this place, and how are you going to react uh, to those things. Um, you make decisions through dialogue trees. You can manipulate objects in the world to make story happen. You can uh, unlock doors and figure out what's beyond them. Uh, there's sort of lots of different ways that we push the story forward or sort of like urge you to uh, push the story forward, I should say. That's such a difficult task, even for these massive, massive teams of hundreds of people trying to make a story in a world that you can explore but has a strong narrative pushing you ahead. For such a small team, what did you guys figure out, I guess, early on was the right way to create a guided narrative but still give the player enough time to, you know, play with that turtle on the pond without completely destroying, <laughs> you know, the sense of story? Because yeah. I'm looking at these worlds, I've seen so many trailers, and it looks so beautiful and there's a lot of times when I want to continue my conversation with Delilah, a lot more when I just want to, you know, explore a little bit. Where, where's that line yeah. and how'd you guys find that? I mean, the goal is really is, is in the player verbs that you select, right? So being able to communicate to her is your number one verb, along with all the exploration stuff, being able to pick things up and bring them around with you. But that's a way some, that was the first thing. It's like, okay, if you pick, if we let you pick something up, like, okay, can you throw it? Can you throw everything? Can you take everything? Can you, you know, like, can you rotate it in your hands and find something new about it? Um, those are all the verbs we give you. So those create the possibility space for all the things that can happen. And then we just really try to say yes to as many of the things as possible. Um, that players might want to do. And if we find ourselves being like, man, players really want to like destroy this object that is really important to the story. Oh, how do we, how do we prevent them from doing that without taking that verb away? Hmm. And we just sit around and figure it out, you know? Um, Does that simple? Eh? So, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot easier said than done, obviously, but, uh, you know, and then if we can figure it out, we go, okay, well, maybe that can't happen. Um, like, we build a rule set for ourselves where that type of interaction is something that can't drive the story forward. So how else can the player discover this crazy thing, you know? Um, and then you just go back to the drawing board. And you say, well, I've got a crazy idea. What if this happens? And it's like, yeah, that fits right within our, like, verb set for the game, and that doesn't break anything else, and that's even more surprising, and wow, that's even better than the idea we had before. There's only a couple ideas in the game where I'm like, man, we 
that's not the best idea we had, but it's the one that we went with. I can think of like maybe one or two things, but normally that process of over the hundreds and hundreds of creative decisions yeah. you make on the game, like just yields, ends up yielding the thing that fits and is the best and is the most surprising and entertaining. So, so you're telling um, me that I can pick up that turtle, look at it round on it, and then have something different to say to the other character, Delilah. Um, you can make decisions about that turtle that will impact things about it and you can bring it home with you you can put it somewhere else in the world you can throw it in the lake you can throw it in the canyon and hopefully stuff will happen <laughs> um depending on where you are in the story and you know like if there's like a good example is like if you're hiking through the woods and you're on this sort of a jovial quest to uh like oh i gotta go deal with these campers that are causing trouble and you find that turtle and maybe you talk to delilah about it and you have a goof and then you name it and then you decide you're going to, like, chuck in the lake, and then something surprising happens. That's great. But maybe later in the story, that would be totally, totally inappropriate, right? Like, maybe you and Delilah have discovered something really sinister, and, you know, when you find this turtle, like, joking about it, and then a, another joke happening when you decide to, like, put it in your backpack, like, doesn't really fit mm -hmm. with the like that would break the story. Um, we just have to know that stuff. You know, we sort of manage the tone of the story at all times. So it's like, here's when jokes can happen. Here's when jokes are replaced with more dramatic dialogue. And um, it's just sort of like another timeline that we're managing as we're watching you play the game. Um, and the game's segmented intelligently. You know, it's broken into chapters, even though it's a free world, open roaming game. Uh, but there are some areas you can't get to. And some days that end before you've returned back to your tower. Um, it's just a giant, I mean, it's just a giant spreadsheet of stuff, really. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just so many lines of code and so many if, if, if this. And then you do that for a couple of years, and then you have a fire watch, and you're done. That's you <laughs> That's a, listen up, folks. That's what it takes to make one of the most highly anticipated games of the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, I, I love the idea. Well, I wanted to ask, because I don't know if this has been entirely confirmed and maybe this is even the wrong question to ask because you're looking at this in a different perspective but because there's so many different choices and it's about very much a relationship between two people will there be some dramatic differences in that relationship felt throughout the story if you do make some kind of you know egregious choices early on or throughout the uh, throughout the tale yeah you know we try not to like telegraph these like egregious choices because I think it's always more powerful when you're like, you wait like half an hour and you go, I wonder if maybe I should have kept that to myself yeah. because I, the dynamic here is different than I thought it was going to be. Or like, oh, I'm really glad I shared that piece of information with her because now she's really opening up to me in a really fascinating way. Um, and I'm learning all this other stuff about this character and it maybe pertains to the plot of the mystery that's happening. You know, um, and that's, that, that's something I, that's stuff I really like. So, like, there's the plot events, and this is the stuff that's going to happen to Henry and Delilah over the course of the game. And then there's the relationship. And how those things are both connected and totally not connected produces really interesting meaning, and I like that stuff. I've always really liked um, making games like that. Uh, and Firewatch is just, like, a bigger exploration and examination of that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, I was trying to think. I kind of walked myself in a full circle there <laughs> when answering your question. But, um, yeah, you know, I think well, what I was going to end with is that when people finish the game, uh, there's always like a comparing and contrasting of story of like, what was your story like and what was my story like? And a lot of that ends up just being like, this is, well, I thought this is what was happening. This is what I felt about this person. And this is what I feel about these characters now. And those things are so different with different people. It's, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a game that the, when you put two people who played it in the same room and go, okay, what do you think about Delilah? What do you think about this thing that happened? What do you think is going to happen next? Like, real arguments start, and I really like that a lot. Well, again, it's so fascinating. I, for someone who's listening that maybe doesn't really understand why you want to have a relationship with a fake person in a forest in the 80s, you know, try because I'm trying to kind of make a compelling case as best I can. You're mm -hmm. the person that, you know, this is your baby. Why do you think this would appeal to people that really love other forms of media that's high quality? You talked about HBO. You talked yeah. about these intense series. 
Why is Firewatch in that category just as much as it is, in your opinion, uh, a great game? Yeah, I mean, because I think, um, to answer your question, I think we build relationships with those characters all the time, you know? Um, like, when I was, I was actually, I was like legitimately in sort of a malaise for a couple of days when Mad Men was over. I'm like, oh, hey, those characters are gone now. And you know, I didn't like a lot of those characters, but I looked forward to seeing them. And uh, it just so happens that games haven't really done a good job of like making you miss their characters too much. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them do wonderfully. Like I think the Uncharted series um, was great at that. I think The Last of Us is great at that. The name two Naughty Dog games, I guess. Um, uh it's just not something that video games are known for. But I think if characters are believable and the story is really tight and compelling, then when it's gone and over, you miss them, you know? And I think that's always, that's, I think that's, that was our, we didn't say that explicitly inside the office because I don't think, I think people would have laughed at me. <laughs> that would have been like, so hard. But, uh, you know, ultimately I think that was what our goal has been. When I look back at the decisions we made and the sort of, ethos we had in making design decisions across the board. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're, if you're the type of person who just binge watches Jessica Jones on Netflix or, you know, uh, finds themselves completely uh, taken by certain characters on Game of Thrones or whatever, um, this is probably a game for you because it means that you like to like transport yourself to places where there are interesting characters. And we've tried to accomplish that with the game. Very, very exciting. Again, thank you so much, Sean Vanneman, one of the co-founders at Campo Santo, talking all about the title Firewatch. What, in your estimation, do you believe this game should give players? You work so hard. You talked about all the man hours. What is your big payoff now in terms of a player experience? I mean, just uh, it really entered, like, exciting entertainment experience just a fulfilling that sort of feeling when you like close the cover on a good book or the credits roll on a movie and you go oh that was really satisfying like oh it's over uh that's it that's like what we're always going for um whether it's this game or the next game you know like if a game comes out on february 9th on psn and steam and uh it'll be available for pc mac and linux on, on steam and when you're done with it that week, maybe, or whenever, that, whenever you get around to finishing it, if that you feel that way, like, we did, like, success. Um, you know, probably a little bit of, like, oh, it's over. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, but, um, like, I want more. Uh, that's, that's the goal, you know. Not something that you sort of get lost in in the middle and you go, oh, I really like that game, but, you know, eh, I kind of lost my attention. Um, I have so many games like that that I absolutely love that I've never finished, you know. Um, this game we want it to be a sort of a satisfying conclusion. And I think when you get to the end, it, it will be. We really put a lot of time and effort into thinking about that last feeling you have when the credits roll. Cannot wait to explore the wilderness of Wyoming. Thank you so much, Sean, for joining the program. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. This is Andy Burkowski on VGS. Make sure you pick up Firewatch.